Hey everybody, Rich Lang here with Prep U. Hey, just going over some little things and thought back to, oh, last couple of times I've been working at the range, I've been having a lot of people come up to me and say, hey, I've got a firearm uh, that I wanna sell. Um, I'd love to sell with you guys, but it's consignment only. But I got a buddy of mine that wants to buy. Can I do that? How do I legally do that? And I've had that more and more over the last, oh gosh, month or so uh, work in the range so I've decided to put this quick video together about person-to-person -person transfers state of Illinois state of Illinois only okay because I'm not sure about a few other states but we're gonna go over this real quick and then I got some tidbits at the end that are interesting again you're gonna go to the Illinois State website please Illinois State Police website and you are gonna go to uh, a section here I don't think you say see it it says firearm transfers and you're gonna get a page that looks like this okay let's see if we can get that right in there hopefully you can see that that's basically what it says I highlighted that top line so it's in the website it's not gonna come up in uh, yellow uh, basically this is your private firearm transfer uh, paperwork what you have to do in the state of Illinois is you have to submit the person you're selling it to their FOID number and their date of birth and then what's going to happen is you're going to get a security code back all right and that's and they're basically going to say you know if you get that code it's okay to transfer that firearm to the other person transaction can go through and then they'll send you back a paper you print it and you're good to go uh, you need to keep that for 10 years it says it right here on the line here that you know it says uh, to determine the validity of the of a FOID number for a firearm transfer and receive a transfer approval number, please enter the FOID card number and date of birth of the person, buyer or transferee, to whom you will be transferring the firearm. Approved firearm transfers will be issued an approval number, which are to be retained for a period of 10 years. So hopefully you got a place that you can put them in a safe, uh, places where you put your insurance paperwork or, or whatever that uh, just hold on to them. There'll be a date on there and in 10 years you can get rid of it. Um, that's about it. That's all you have to do. Then you can do the transaction and you are good to go. Um, what is it? Yeah, we basically, the Illinois State Rifle Association sent out a bulletin basically saying the same thing back in August. If you are not hooked up to that website, if you are not a member, do so. Uh, they are a great organization, get a lot of information uh, through that. Anyhow, what's the matter, Shiloh? You don't like the ISRA? Hmm. He doesn't know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, so that's it. Person to person transfer, and it's really quite simple. Uh, just print the paperwork, and you're good to go. I said uh, a couple other tidbits uh, that I was going to throw into this video also. Uh, how many of you have heard of the Charleston loophole? Anti uh, firearms people, anti Second Amendment people use that all the time. Uh, the Charleston firearm loophole. How many of you know what that is? Um, not many people do. I've heard people talk about it. I've talked to people about it before. Basically, it was caused by the government. Uh, what was going on is, by law, they have three days to get you information and get you your firearm. Uh, and what happened was an individual who should not, should not have gotten a firearm, should not have gotten approval, um, after the three days, he got his firearm because the government was so slow and they didn't get back to the gun store that not to let him go or not to sell him the firearm. And I believe a, a crime, maybe even a murder was committed because of that. And they call that now the Charleston loophole, uh, which is unfortunate. And that was a planned slowdown by the government at that point uh, to try to keep people from not getting firearms, and it kind of backfired on them, that, uh, no pun intended, um, because it did exactly the opposite of what they want. So when you hear people saying, oh yeah, the Charles and Loophole, explain to them that it was government induced, okay? Last thing, uh, if you have not seen the new California firearm laws that uh, Governor Newsom just signed into law, Google it, you'll be amazed. Uh, hopefully that's not coming to, uh, this state and other states, it's uh, absolutely insane to be honest with you. 
So, but that's it. That was the person-to-person -person firearm transfer, uh, which you should really, uh, it's really easy. You don't have to worry about it. And this is only if you're not an FFL. If you're an FFL, you don't have to do this. And don't do this if you're FFL. You have your own uh, ways of doing this. this. Is if you're neither person are um, have federally federal firearm license. All right. So that's about it. Um, hopefully you like this video. Hopefully it helped you out just a little bit. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you like the video, please like the video. Uh, any comments are always uh, always welcome. Any videos you want to see. Uh, any questions you have, which a lot of people have a lot of questions, they send to me and I try to get it right, text it right back to them. And also check us out on Facebook under uh, Prep You. So that's about it. So for now, uh, as always, be aware of your surroundings. Uh, make sure you know where you're going, what's happening, and are prepared and have the proper equipment at all times. And always be prepared to be on your own for up to 72 hours uh, because we, as we all know, um, your life may depend on the prepping that you do. Seriously, it will. Thanks a lot. Take care. Have a good day.